Okay, welcome to a video uh, which is going to take a look at a, a question which might be a, a focus for a synoptic essay. This is about uh, possible tax on plastic items such as coffee cups and uh, takeaway meal trays. It's synoptic because it asks for you to consider both the micro and macroeconomic effects of a tax on producers of plastic. So 25 markers, so we're looking to build three points, analyse and evaluate them, and then provide a, re a reasoned conclusion at the end. Of course, this is highly topical. The increasing tide of plastic waste in the ocean has been described by the United Nations as a planetary crisis. Somewhere between 8 and 12 million tonnes of plastic being thrown into our oceans every year. In this recent survey uh, from, the World, uh, from the World Health Organization of uh, nearly 260 bottles sampled from 11 brands across nine countries, of all the bottles, only 17 were found to be plastic free. So 93% of bottled water contains microplastics. Each litre on average contained 325 pieces of microplastic. This is a clearly a huge issue. So the crucial thing in an essay such as this is to build a point, analyse, apply and then evaluate it. And uh, my suggestion is to do it three times and then provide a final reasoned conclusion at the end. Let's have a look at three possible approaches. There's no right or wrong answer. We're just looking at uh, maybe good practice here. So the micro impact. One micro effect, in other words, I post very clearly of a tax on packaging. It's going to increase the private cost of producers and hopefully encourage them to innovate, uh, to cut the amount of plastic they use, and perhaps provide better facilities for people who want to recycle their plastic items. Here's the analysis. Plastic packaging creates negative externalities both from production and consumption. Bit of application here, uh, only less than 1% of coffee cups in the UK, for example, are recycled. You, you use your contextual knowledge. There could be some data in the extract to bring in here. And therefore, because of the externalities, there's a case for a tax on producers so that some of the external costs are internalised. Now, before we look at this, can you visualise the diagram showing external costs and marginal social costs lying above private costs? If you can, this would be a great point in the essay to put a diagram in. And less businesses such as Coca-Cola and Pepsi find ways of cutting plastic content, their costs will go up and their profits may fall as a result. This might then lead to a fall in their share price, affecting stakeholders, including the owners and also the employees. Of course, more options for producers to pass on some of all of the tax on plastic to their customers. Evaluating the point that you've made is really important. So although in theory, the tax on plastic packaging will help correct for market failure, in practice, many consumers have a strong default bias towards maintaining what they do at the moment. Single-use plastic bottles, plastic cups, it's pretty much part of their lifestyle. So therefore, even if the extra cost is passed on to them, it might only be a small percentage of their total spending, they've got a default bias. Therefore, the demand for plastic products will be inelastic, which means the tax might be ineffective. An alternative strategy might be to encourage retailers to expand the bottle deposit scheme, for example, or funding for, pre, for free public water fountains. The bit in blue there, although in theory a tax would work, in practice it may not, is a really good evaluation phrase to use. Okay, let's move on to a second point. Oh, before we do that, here's the analysis diagram I mentioned before. So, a good supporting diagram really helps the analysis. You don't have to put all the writing on here, but clearly... In this case, the output of products that use plastic packaging uh, can lead to an increase in external cost. So the marginal social cost lies above the private cost. And there is overproduction from a society's point of view. You might want to show the data weight loss of welfare in this diagram. And uh, you could also look at the externalities from consumption of plastic packaging for an AKO student with negative consumption externalities. Consumption of a product reduces the benefit of a third party. Therefore, the benefits to society are less than the benefits obtained by individuals. Again, overconsumption, overproduction is the heart of this answer. A second, micro impact. So two of my points are going to be micro and one's going to be macro. A second micro impact of a tax on plastic packaging, always go back to the question, would be that the real incomes of consumers would fall. So I'm going to focus this time on consumers. And in particular, this might have the most impact, biggest effect on lower income households. Then I brought my explanation. A tax on suppliers causes an inward shift of the supply curve, which other factors remaining the same will lead to an increase in the retail price of a product such as energy drinks, coffee, 
bottled water, takeaway, processed meals, and so on. When prices rise, the real incomes of consumers fall, and the effect might be greatest, most significant on larger families on moderate incomes, who often rely on prepackaged food. Uh, oftentimes they have quite a strong income elasticity for that kind of food. Those foods use a lot of plastic packaging. This might mean, it's a good connective phrase, that the tax on plastic would be having a regressive effect on the overall distribution of income, leading to a rise in inequality. So my micro point here is that the tax on plastic packaging, in particular processed takeaway foods, could actually have a regressive effect on, on bigger families who rely on that kind of food, oftentimes from the supermarket. The evaluation point, although there is a risk of a tax having a regressive effect, going back to my previous point, much depends, evaluation phrase, on whether households change their behaviour. Bit of application here, the plastic bag tax is widely seen as a success, it's been around for a few years, it's led to a big reduction in the number of bags handed out, paid for in supermarkets. The extra revenue from a new plastic tax could also be hypothecated towards more funding for projects such as you know expanding early years education, improving free school meals, subsidised transport for families which could have a, a progressive effect on households. So the, the key point here is, that, is how the tax revenue might be used. It could be pumped back into uh, projects which benefit families. Okay so the crucial point here is we're making a point, we're building the analysis, we're trying to use a bit of application where we can and we're trying to evaluate the point we're making. If you wanted to use this kind of diagram, this would be fine. This shows a, a, a tax on the, on the product. Try and contextualise the analysis if you can to show the, so I haven't properly labelled it, it's the amount of plastic consumed or plastic bottles, price of a plastic bottle. Probably best to label the diagram as well. If you wanted to show the effect on cost of a business, you could also use cost of revenue curves. It's up to you. And then my third point is going to be a macro point, because I'm, this obviously this is a synoptic essay. So one macro effect of a tax, again, signposting, macro, going back to the question, is that it could lead or would lead to an increase in the rate of inflation and therefore potentially a significant increase in the overall cost of living. Here's my analysis. The tax would affect many industries in the UK, wide-ranging consequences including drinks and food makers, manufacturers, other suppliers, magazine producers, coffee shops, what have you. Their variable costs rise, producers will pass on higher costs through the supply chain to final consumers. So this will lead to an increase in cost Porsche inflation, shown by an inward shift of the short and aggregate supply curve. A higher cost of living lowers incomes and might lead to a surge in wage demand in the labour market. Now, it's open to debate, I suppose, how significant this could be, but the argument is if you put a, a significant tax on producers in the UK, it could lead to a rise in inflation and a fall in incomes. My evaluation of that point is that the impact of a tax on inflation depends upon, or depends on, the significance of plastic in supply costs. The point I'm making is that in many industries, uh, labour and energy costs, for example, are more important than the cost of plastic. So the effect on inflation might be limited or muted. And in addition, of course, in the, the firms affected, <coughs> bottled, bottled water companies, for example, food makers, have an incentive to reformulate their packaging to cut the amount of plastic and if they improve their product design maybe find alternative materials ultimately that could lead to lower costs and therefore prices to like many industries in fact make a case for saying in the long run firms might actually become more efficient in how they make their products causing prices to be falling not rising anyway I th hope, you, hope you can see what i've done here i can add in a, a bit of a macro diagram for what it's put a a macro point in that there's a risk of cost push inflation caused by the inward shift of aggregate supply. So I've made three points, I've tried to analyse and evaluate three points in my answer. Uh, it's quite important if you have time to come to a, a reasoned conclusion, hopefully a reasoned balanced conclusion. This would be mine. Plastic pollution poses significant long-term risks for millions of people in the natural environment. Focusing on the long term here. There is a case on grounds of market failure for a tax based on the polluter pays principle. I favour, with normative economics coming in, I favour sliding scale tax on plastic with packaging that's the hardest to recycle being charged the most. So that's the argument similar to the sugar tax. So higher sugar drinks are taxed more heavily. 
And I also argue that revenue should be ring fenced or hypothecated to fund local authorities to provide free water fountains in many more public places. A law that plastic bottles have to contain a minimum of 50% recycled plastic might also stimulate, whoops, spelling out there, let's, let's change that, might also stimulate innovation in the long run. So they're throwing in an alternative again that you might put, you might have a, a more a tougher regulatory environment. So plastic bottles have to be 50% recycled if they're, going to, if they're going to be sold in the UK. Either way, come to a view, uh, in this case it's more a micro view, that uh, regulations and sliding scale taxes are likely to be most effective. But the view you come to is of course completely up to you. It's up to you in terms of how you want to answer this question. The crucial point is, in a synoptic essay, you have to bring some micro and some macroeconomics into play. And if you do that well, with good analysis, supporting application and focused evaluation, you'll be in a good place. Okay, thank you.